All right, we get straight into all sport here on the Morning Rush. The sun is out, it's hitting my face. But yeah, man, it's a beautiful day to have a beautiful day. And speaking of all things good, it's been a fantastic time uh, to be a Zimbabwe cricket fan, especially when you look at the last seven to eight months. Uh, Zimbabwe winning the qualifiers, the T20 global qualifiers in Bulawayo, going to the T20 World Cup in Australia. And then more recently, we saw Bangladesh and India paying us a visit here, a series win over Bangladesh. And then more recently, we are also hosting at the Irish. And today we do have a member of uh, the Chevron's team, the Zimbabwe senior national cricket team. His name is Clive Madande. He's just taken over uh, the gloves per se uh, as the team's new wicketkeeper in both uh, the T20 internationals and the ODIs. Clive, welcome to ZTM Prime. And how does it feel? I know you're a very young man, just 22 to hear Chevron's Zimbabwe senior national team and then Clive Badande. How does that make you feel? I mean, first of all, thank you so much for having me today. It's yeah. such a, a great pleasure. I mean, um, it's, it's always a special feeling, honestly, eh, to just have me, you know, representing my country and stuff. So it's more like a blessing as well. So yeah, pretty good indeed. Is this something that you always dream, uh, dreamt about? Uh, tell us, where did it start, like the, your, your relationship with cr cricket? I know you're from Chitunguza with the likes of Wesley Madere, Tadewa yeah. Nashe Marumani, Moutun Shumba. It seems like all the young kids in the cricket team are coming from Chitunguza. What's happening in Chitunguza in terms of cricket? Because we're seeing a lot of you guys coming from there and making it all the way to the top. Well, it started a long time ago, actually. You know, um, just growing up with my friends, just playing street cricket and stuff, and just ended up just... Um, pursuing the, the game and just training even harder and just enjoying it, spending our time at the field, just uh, playing around, this and that. And then the four of us, Wesley, myself, Milton and Tony, we just started to have a little competition between ourselves and then eventually we just started to play on a high level, which is very nice and being together right now in the national setup. Which All right. is absolutely amazing. Yeah. Amazing. So yeah. like I said, uh, he's the new wicketkeeper for the Chevrons. But when it comes to wicketkeepers in this country, uh, Zimbabwe has got a very rich tradition. You look at the current coach, Dave Houghton. He was a wicketkeeper when Zimbabwe got a test status back in the early 90s. Uh, one of the greatest uh, players to ever wear the red and yellow off of the Chevrons. Andy Flower was a wicketkeeper himself. We talk about Tatenda Taibu, uh, one of the, uh, the youngest uh, test captains of four Zimbabwe as well and before Clive we also saw uh, uh, Regis Chakaba uh, being the wicket keeper of four Zimbabwe. Uh, Clive when you hear those names Dave Houghton, Andy Flower, Tatenda Taibu, uh, Regis Chakaba and now Clive Madande you know to be uh, mentioned uh, or to have the same position as uh, the greats who have played the game for Zimbabwe is that any added pressure or it's even more motivation for you to do well? I mean, look, we, we grew up just watching those guys, people like Terinda Taibu, Dev Walton, Regis. Regis is one of my, my, I can say, my best mate. He's always motivating to me, he's always encouraging me, giving me that extra push, that extra yard to just work in hard. So, I mean, it's, it's more like motivation and it's been, it's been amazing because those guys always been there for me, just teaching me this and that and making me grow even better with my game, you know. So, yeah. I, I know Regis, he handed you both your caps in the limited overs cricket in T20 and uh, in the ODIs. What was that relationship like? Because I know you also did travel to uh, the T20 World Cup in Australia as an understudy to him. Just walk us through that experience. What was that like? Because obviously, when that's happening, you probably know I'm next in line. Yeah, right. Um, with, with Reggie, I think. Um, so the coach told me before the World Cup, you know, um, you're going to be the backup wicketkeeper. I'm not promising you a game which is pretty okay with me because I was there to learn as a, as a young wicketkeeper. So Reggie was always my, my go-to guy to just go there and get some information, to get a little bit of information to play this game, even just to be, to be courage enough to just take on the next level and something like that. So, I mean, Reggie, Reggie, Reggie is always the guy who I can go to even now, even he's in Australia right now. I can text him any day and say, Reggie, I'm doing this, I'm struggling with this, and he's always been there, he's calling me, it's always, um, you know, uh, just chatting about cricket, just getting me forward or something like that. So it's more like a learning curve for me. It was more like a learning curve for me, learning experience. And to be honest, I found out that I learned quite a lot of things. All right. And then obviously your 
debut into the senior national team and you know, your, the caps that you've had subsequently have also coincided with the time that Dave Houghton has come in as a coach and you know, speaking to anybody in the team and even from the outside looking in, it's very evident that you know, he's changed uh, the culture and the attitude and even the way that uh, Zimbabwe has been playing their cricket. You know, as a young man coming from Chitungu, you know, what are some of the things that you've picked up and that you've seen uh, Dave has been able to impart in you in terms of just giving you the confidence? Obviously, he gave you that vote of confidence by taking you as an understudy, but what are some of the other things that you've been learning and the team has been learning from Dave? Look, Dave, Dave's coaching is pretty simple. Eh? He just tells you, go express yourself. You don't have to worry about failing. If you fall, it's okay. You're going to work out on it. So that's more like, uh, that's more like freeing yourself from pressure and stuff. So Dave has always been that guy who just tells you, go play the way you can play. You know, you don't have to put yourself under pressure. You don't have to put yourself under the pump. You just play the way you've been playing ever since. So that's how he's changed a lot of things and stuff. So guys have been courageous enough. The guys have... have a lot of confidence, and the guys have been playing their best out of their abilities. So that's something that is massive that has been changed by Dave Alton, to be honest. And it's something that is changing Zimbabwe cricket as well. You know, starting to win so many games, starting to be world class, beating big teams. So it is, it is quite a thing that Dave has changed. All right, uh, and then we have to talk about that moment. I think most cricket fans and even maybe just general sports fans would have probably become more familiar with you. Was it, was it last Saturday when uh, we beat uh, Ireland? Uh, yeah, and you scored that. Uh, we needed four runs off the last ball. A lot of people had seen you with the gloves, impressed with what you're doing. There's an iconic photo of you just with your, hair, with your hands up, bat up. Uh, can you tell us what that was like for you as a player? Because there was a lot of pressure. Uh, so we needed four runs off just one ball. <laughs> and, you know, you hit the, the boundary. Like, were you thinking, what was going through your mind during that moment? I mean, look, uh, I think we needed like 11 or four balls. Yeah. And when Brad walked in, and then uh, I told Brad, you know what? We're just, we're just taking everything. And if you run, we're running hard. If you get two or three, that's going to be the target. So Brad first boy got a six, and then we needed five of three, if I still remember. Then the next boy got, um, got LBW, and there was five runs from two balls left. And then I told him, Willy, Willy was coming in next. I told Willy, you know, um, just hit as hard as you can. Yeah. Okay? But if you're going to run, we're going to run three, right? If it's one, it's okay. I'm going to take it on the, guy, on the next guy. Then uh, Willy got a, one, got a single when I was on strike. I found myself just... Did you, did you think yeah. about it too much or you just... No, I didn't even think about yeah. it too much. The guy was bowling pretty well. He was nailing the orcas very good. And I was to myself, I need to find a better stance here to just take him out because he's been bowling well. So what's the alternative that I can use here to just take him on? So I was thinking oh, I had so many options. So he tried, he tried to double bluff me because he's moving the fielder behind my back. That's a fine leg. So I thought he was going for a bouncer. And I told myself, no ways. So he's probably going to continue what he was doing, bowling those yorkers. So I'm just going to hang back a bit in my crease and then catch it on the photos and just walk it through mid-wicket area or over a car corner there. So For somebody who so says I, they didn't think a lot clear, of you, you had it figured out, eh? Yeah, I had figured out. <laughs> yeah. I, I thought about it. So I had like five, about three minutes of thinking because the ballers were chatting and the team was talking to the captain and stuff. Well, what's the plan? Already I was calculating what I was, I was supposed to do there. And uh, I found myself just calming myself down. I was like, you know what? You've got a plan now. If you don't execute, it's okay. But you know what? You've made it a plan. So let's try to use that plan. If you got it, you win big for the country. And then at the end of the day, it was a win-win situation for me. Yeah, so we're, we're all happy. We're <laughs> celebrating. We're partying through the night. So what has been the, the reaction from your friends, your family, or even just maybe, you know, are you getting more recognition now where you work? Up, hey, that's the guy who hit the, the four ads. I mean, everyone was pumped, eh? Yeah. I, I just, I think I was just in shock after hitting that boundary. I saw everyone just coming from down the changing room, just coming to me. And I was like, what just happened here? Yeah, you know, it was just a, a shock moment, you know what I'm saying? I mean... Uh, it, it happens while, once in a while in cricket just to score a boundary of the last ball to win for your country. So I was just shocked and then I just saw everyone running down the stairs, coming to me. I mean, everyone was just excited. Eh? So it was, 
it was something that he, is memorable. We quite remember it for a long time now. Yeah? All right, you spoke about the changing room. We know there's a lot of senior players, Sekander Raza, Craig Irvine. Uh, now Gary Balance has come into uh, that squad. But there's also a core of young players, like you said, Wesley, Tadiwa Nashimarumani, yourself, um, Knowlton. Uh, what, what's the balance like in that squad? Because I'm sure, you know, even in terms of lifestyle and the things that you like, maybe the things that Craig, as somebody who's in his mid-30s, you're in your early 20s, how do you guys find a balance and maybe in terms of the music that you guys end up playing in the dressing room, the conversations uh, that you have, how do you guys find the balance between that? I mean, as you know, it's, it's been there, like culture-wise, you know, you have to just listen to your, to your senior players, you have to do everything for your senior players. So that true, that culture has been there for long and we have been respecting that in the, in the long run. So whenever Craig wants something, whenever Craig wants to say something, you have to listen and we have to respect his time and then make time. Raza, people like Bell, and those guys actually believe in young players. They believe in Wesley, they believe in myself, they believe in Milton. So they respect the two-way respect they've been having, we've been having. It's been quite well, so we don't have any sort of problems in the change room. It's always friendship, brotherhood, you know, so... Yeah, it's just a you, you, You're a senior player now. You're part of the national team in the ODIs and the T20s. Attention is switching to the test format. You know, some say the hardest form of cricket. You right. know, that's the, the pinnacle for any cricketer. Obviously, the squad hasn't been named. But what would it mean to you uh, to make your test debut as a 22-year-old, uh, you know, who just made his limited overs debut just last year and against a team uh, with the likes of uh, uh, Jason Holder and all those guys from uh, the West Indies, Alzari Joseph and all those guys? Yeah. Um, hey, uh, you know, I don't know, honestly. <laughs> I mean, growing up, I always wanted to play Test Major. I think it's the best cricket ever. The best cricket is you just um, show your skills, your 100% skills, your, your basics and stuff. So it's, it's probably the the most watched cricket actually around, you know, besides the T20s leagues and stuff. So test cricket has always been my thing. It's always been um, something that I wanted to play to get those baggy, that baggy green, that blazer, you know, represent my country at a high level. I mean, um, you see, I've, I've got a decent record in the first class, uh, four day matches and the Logan Cup. So yeah, I was hoping, I'm hoping like 100% that I'm gonna be selected and make it into the cut and just get my first debut Test debut for Zimbabwe. All right, uh, you heard it for yourself. Uh, the future looks bright for Zimbabwe cricket. 22-year-old uh, Clive Madande stepping into the shoes uh, that Dave Halton, Andy Flower, Tatenda Taibu, Regis Chakava have worn. Uh, so, yeah, uh, that's a wrap. But before we go, just a quick word. Maybe from, you are from Chitunguza. Maybe your message to a kid in Popoma, Sakuva, Mbari, who's listening to you, watching you, hearing your story. You know, what words of advice would you like to give them before we sign out? Well, um... It's just no hard work never goes in vain. Eh? If you put in the hard wires, you put in the work, it'll always come true. Just be patient, your time will come. And uh, for sure, God will open doors for you one day if you just keep on working. That's a Clive Matlande, one of the young kids who's the future of Zimbabwe cricket. We're having a chat with him on the morning rush and wishing him all the best. And hopefully he'll get that green blaze as well as that bag of green hat as we get ready to face off with the West Indies. Those matches will be in Bulayo next week. But that's a wrap of your morning rush sport.